Hey everybody, how's it going? Hey, uh, do me a favor and smash that subscribe button and then hit the little uh, notification bell. I'd appreciate that. So let's go on into the video. Hey everybody out there in YouTube land. How's it going this morning? It's, um, well, I was going to say it's oh dark 30, but it's not quite that early. It's like 530. Not so bad. Um, got up a while ago, though, but um, just kind of now getting around to to uh, to doing this video. And uh, I was going to share a little bit about the oil field life with you in as far as what I do. And so I'm an electronic technician. Um, often referred to as e-tech. In fact, mainly referred to as e-tech in, in the industry. And it, um, in that particular job, covers just a wide variety of uh, types of service companies that are out there. Different, they do different things. But an e-tech does pretty much the same thing at any company. Uh, you're responsible for fixing almost anything with a wire attached to it. it. It could be networking, it could be satellite stuff, it could be um, like solenoids on hydraulic valves, engine stuff. Um, it's just a, a microwaves, some generators, all just a long, long list of stuff, right? Which is good because I like the variety. And... Um, and that's one thing you don't get in a lot of jobs. So it's been a positive thing for sure. So when I started my career in the oil field, um, at that time, it was the oil boom. And things were crazy. I think the price for a barrel of oil was like 115 bucks. And now, um, due to COVID, I think mainly at this point, the price of oil is about $40 a barrel. And so what that causes is there's less demand, right? People are not traveling as much as they were uh, flying, all that kind of stuff. So it impacts how much oil is used. Because the price of oil is down, oil companies are, there's less incentive for them to drill for oil, right? And because the work that I do, the company that I work with, is reliant on oil companies drilling a lot of the times. And, and so that's just not there. I'm very lucky that I've been able to hold my job as an e-tech over the years through a couple of downturns. Um, just been very fortunate. And a lot of people, you know, have been laid off or just let go entirely. Uh, I haven't had to deal with that. Now, I have had a reduction in what I earn because of fewer hours. And, of course, when we're working out in the oil field, we get, you know, as an e-tech, because it's a like a skilled trade, so to speak, we get a pretty good hourly rate. Um, but our real money is made with overtime. So when I first started, I was working probably 110 to 120 hours a week. I am not even joking. That's how busy it was. And so there were a lot of times where we would put in 18-hour days, um, ultimately have like four hours of sleep just because of, you know, you have your wind-down time when you get off of your shift, and then you have, you get ready with a shower in the morning and all, you know, all of that. But so you only have like four hours of sleep in that situation. And when you work 14 days in a row that way, it's exhausting. And, um, of course, the older you get, it gets harder to do. Um, but we're not in that situation right now. And I, and I don't think that we'll ever get back to that insanity. But I, I believe in time, the price of oil will go up and we'll get a little busier. Uh, I primarily, at this point, I work days. And I like that. It's, I like working days. I'm not a night guy necessarily, and it's just hard for my my system clock to adjust to that. I I get to about three or four in the morning, and 
I am about asleep on my feet. I swear to you. But in the, of course, daytime is different. My body's acclimated to that, and that's easy. So when you look at those hours as it was before, uh, because in what I do as an e-tech, it's kind of a specialized trade, I guess, if you will. And so we get paid a good amount per hour. And back then, especially, when you talk about that number of hours, you get overtime, right, for anything over 40 hours a week. And that was great money back then. I I don't even want to tell you how much, but there was great incentive to be working out here in the oil fields as an e-tech, no doubt about it. Um, fewer hours now, but that's okay. You know, it's it's still a very good job, and uh, it allows me to, to provide for my family in a way that I wouldn't be able to otherwise. So I'm very grateful for that. And... I work mostly days. Well, I work, here's how it, the current company I'm with, here's how I I uh, do my schedule. I work during the day, uh, primarily in the shop. But when we have jobs going, I'll, we, I will go and, and visit location and just check on things, see how it's all going. But I'm on call when I'm not working. And so there are times when I have to run out to repair a problem during the night. And so I just do that. Um, that's just the nature of the work, right? I'm the only e-tech, so if there's something going on, that's what I do. But, uh, you know, and, and so the money is is good. No doubt about that. Here's the downside of that. Just so you all know, if you're ever considering doing this kind of work, you don't get to see your family very much. In fact, um, I would say that I am away from home 75% of the time. And here's why. Let's say I'm right now I work like a, a two week on, one week off schedule. Well, it takes me pretty much a day of travel each way to come out and work. And so, um, so I'm gone from home 75% of the time, and that's really hard. Um, I miss my family a lot. Uh, I've got a couple of granddaughters. I miss seeing them. It's, it's a hard lifestyle, but I feel especially bad for, um, for younger folks that have kids at home. I, don't, I just don't know how they do it. They miss so much of their growing up. So I, I have um, just a lot of respect for them to be able to come out here and do that. In fact, I, ha I have a lot of respect for anybody that would come out here and work in that type of situation and work in the elements that we often encounter. I'm fortunate in that the work that I do, um, I'm not out in the elements all the time. And um, there are... You know, there are plenty of jobs out here, and most of the people out here have to work in pretty harsh conditions. So I, I'm in North Dakota, and um, the summertime is pretty good, you know. It's it's not killer hot here. Um, it's actually kind of nice in spots, right? In the wintertime, though, it's not so pretty. Um, there have been many times, and I've worked in, in North Dakota. I've also worked in... Um, Texas and um, New Mexico and Wyoming, but I spent most of my time here in North Dakota over the last 10 years. And in the wintertime, it's just, it can be brutal, 30 um, to 40 degrees below zero, and that's without the wind chill. And then you put throw the wind chill in there, and it, it, you just can't be outside for very long at all, and you'll, otherwise you'll risk frostbite. Um, but when, when we're running a job in those extremes, it's hard to keep a job going because everything wants to freeze. You can, you can thaw it out and then move on to something else that's frozen. And then that'll freeze. The one that you fixed before will freeze up or equipment won't run right or start because the, the, um, diesel is all gelled up. It's really something. But, um, 
but we power through it somehow. And um, but I respect all the guys for for coming out here and working. We're all doing it for the same reason, pretty much, and that is to make a better life for our families. And that's pretty cool, right? Um, I think there's some honor in that. So in the time that I've been out in the oil fields, I've been pretty fortunate in that the companies that I've worked for have uh, put me up to stay somewhere, um, whether it be a man camp, um, and I'll tell you more about that in a second, or they've given me an allowance to get a place, um, or been in a hotel. So I've never had to pay for a place on my own. It's always been either I've been reimbursed for it or um, put into a, a man camp kind of thing. And so the man camps, you may have heard stories about them before, I don't know, but um, essentially it's a, a place with, a, oh, I don't want to say, not a hotel for sure because the rooms are super small. Um, enough that, you know, like a cot-sized bed with a sink and a shower and a toilet, and that's about it. Nothing, no frills for sure. Um, but it's a place to to sleep when you're not working and get your shower for the next day. And a lot of times, um, depending on the situation, they will provide food there at the van camps, have a cafeteria kind of thing. Uh, you go through the line, get the food for the day, whatever is whatever they're cooking. Um, then they have a variety of other things you can choose that they have every day. So there, and of course, that's comparing man camps. Some have better food than others, and there's better living arrangements. Uh, why, there's a wide range of things, just like there are hotels, right? There are just as many differences between man camps. So anyway, I've been in lucky in, in that regard, but it's a hard way to live, you know, especially in the small rooms like that. You really feel like you're in a, um, a prison cell, kind of. Um, you're away from home. It's just not home. And you're making good money, like I said, but it's it's just... It, there's a sacrifice to making good money like this. And that's that's what it is. And so you can get to a point where it's slow enough where then you start to weigh everything, right? Um, you may be still making more money than what you would at home but is it really worth it right you, you ask that your question you ask that question all the time of yourself and at this point yes it still is even though there's fewer hours even though um, there's less pay because of that it's still worth it in my situation um, hard to say what what I'll do in the future Ten years is a long time in oil. Uh, there's a lot of people I've seen uh, come to work up in North Dakota, uh, close to like the start of winter time, and the first big cold snap that comes through, they are out of here, and I can't can't really blame them because it's brutal. Um, but I've experienced the same thing myself in working down in Texas, where um, especially in like central Tex South Central Texas, uh, close to the um, the Gulf there. 100 degrees, high humidity. I don't think that I've ever sweat so much in my damn life. I every day just would be done at the end of the day, uh, just totally soaked. And, I, you know, part of it is I'm just this big guy from the north that's not used to that kind of weather at all. Um, so it would impact me quite a bit. Other people that that live down there, that work down there, no big deal. But um, West Texas is different because it's there's not as much humidity. It's dry. And, um, but it's still dang hot. I mean, you're looking at 100 degrees. So I worked in that situation for a long time, too. Pretty interesting stuff, though. I've uh, been able to travel a little bit around the, the U.S. because of uh, working in this job, experiencing different things, different cultures. Uh, so that's been pretty cool. 
Um, I like the, the ability to uh, work outside, uh, travel around a little bit. I don't know if I could ever do a job where I was just sitting inside all the time. I'm pretty sure I would go crazy. Heck, I'm already halfway there, so it wouldn't take much to make me totally crazy. If I'm, and I, the people that know me would say, that's true. He's messed up. Oilfield has a lot to do with that, I'm just saying. Um, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, great opportunities when oil is at a decent price. Um, solid jobs. Price to pay for it. So it, as long as you come into the job knowing uh, what all is involved with it, the pros, the cons, you can do okay, but man, it's it's a hard lifestyle. It, I'm not gonna lie. It's harder, you know, as you get older too. It's it's just tough. So, so that's it. Hopefully, if you're considering ever doing something like this, um, you'll remember this video and kind of think about how it applies to you and if. You know if it's going to be the right job and all that kind of stuff but if you have questions feel free to comment and i'll get back to you uh, maybe tell me about your experiences if you uh, if you feel that you want to but uh, if you like this video and you want to see more content like this uh, feel free to like it or dislike it whatever you want preferably like it uh, and i appreciate you watching Thanks a lot. Have a good one.